Rob Berger here, author of Retire Before Mom and Dad. This is the chapter four video. Recall in chapter four, we walked through a hypothetical of someone earning $50,000 a year, saving 5% of their income, and earning a 9.3% rate of return over a 45-year period. Given those assumptions, they would end up with just over $1.7 million. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made those calculations so that you can make them on your own. You can change the numbers uh, that I used uh, to fit your specific circumstances. So I'm gonna walk through uh, how to do that and even some ways to sort of take this calculator uh, to the next level so that it's very simple for you to use. You can, you'll be able to change uh, the amount you save. You'll be able to change the assumed rate of return. You'll even be able to factor in any current savings you have uh, into the formula. It's very easy to do. So let's get started. Now recall from chapter four, again, the assumptions were we'd save $208 a month, uh, earning 9.3% rate of return over sort of a traditional working year, say from age 22 to 67, that's 45 years. Given those assumptions at the end of that time period, you'd have $1,708,072.76. So let's look at how we calculate that. Now, here, I simply have put typed in the number. There's no formula behind it. It's just the number. So let's walk through the formula here and we'll see if uh, the numbers uh, uh, match. So, in, in, and again, I am in Google uh, Spreadsheet. You can do this in Excel. The formula is the same. And you'll start by typing an equal sign. That tells uh, the spreadsheet that a formula is coming and we have to identify the formula. And here we're gonna use what's called future value because we wanna know what the value of these investments will be uh, in the future, in this case, 45 years from now. So equal sign FV, and then uh, we open the parentheses and you can see here the formula. We need to put in the rate of return, the number of periods, in this case, 40, 45 years, and what they call the payment amount. Think of that as the amount we're investing each period, whether it's each month or each year. And then there are a few other variables that we'll come to in just a minute. So let's start uh, with the rate, and we'll assume 9.3, and you can literally just type in 9.3 uh, followed by a percentage sign. You could also, by the way, just do 0.093, uh, but we'll do 9.3%. And the number of periods, for now, we're gonna put 45, 45 years. And for the payment amount, I'm gonna do something a little different. Uh, in the book, I assume $208 a month. If you multiply that by 12, it's just under $2,500 because of some rounding. I think it comes out to $2,496. I'm gonna use that number in this formula and I'll explain why in a minute. The other thing we have to remember to do is actually make this a negative number. And the reason behind that is, think of this as money going out into an investment. So it's leaving your account, if you will, uh, and going into an investment. If you use a negative number, uh, as you'll see, the result you get back will be a positive number. And then we just close the parentheses. And what happened? We're not even close to the $1.7 million. In fact, we're off by, goodness, more than $250,000. Well, uh, here's what happened. If we copy this formula over, we're gonna try it again. And so if you look at the formula, we're doing this on an annual basis. In the book, I assumed monthly compounding because I think it's a little more uh, realistic with the way the world works. You know, you tend to have a bank account or a CD that compounds, some even compound daily, but I think most compound monthly. So I think it, it, it's, a, it's a, a better reflection of sort of reality. So how do we turn this formula that, that's compounding annually into one that compounds monthly? Well, it's pretty simple. We just, for the interest rate, we divide by 12, that gets us our monthly rate of return rather than an annual rate of return. And then we have to convert 45 years into months. That's easy enough. Just multiply it by 12. And then for our, our contributions, and again, you can imagine this being, say, a monthly contribution to a 401k, for example. Uh, this is our annual contribution. So to make it monthly, we just divide by 12. And let's see what happens. Well, there you go. So now our, our, our result matches exactly what we had in, in the book. And it's really that simple. Now, something to point out, compounding annually versus compounding monthly 
It's a really big difference. It's just one of the examples uh, of how seemingly insignificant changes over long periods of time can have a huge impact on your wealth. It's a theme that was throughout the book, Retire Before Mom and Dad. And this is just one example. Now, let's imagine that you want to do these calculations for yourself, but you already have some money saved and invested. You're not starting at zero. In the book, uh, chapter four, I kind of assume someone had no savings to begin with, but you may have some savings. How can we factor that in? Well, if you uh, look at the formula after the payment amount, which we have here, we can also add our, the current value of our investments. So to do that, we just add a comma. And again, we're gonna to wanna to make this an, a negative number. And let's assume, well, I'll assume you've got $10,000 already saved. And you can see uh, it changes the number. And you might think, wait a minute, Rob, there's, this formula is broken. You just added $10,000. Uh, and yet, look at this, it, it increased the number by about $650,000. There's got to be a mistake, right? I mean, yes, we know from the book that small changes that multiplied over time have a huge impact, but come on, $10,000 into, into $600,000 more, that can't be right, can it? Well, let's check it out. We can actually do a future value, right, where we do our 9.3%. Again, we're going to divide it by 12 to get the monthly rate of return over 45 years and multiply that by 12 to get a monthly number. And then uh, for payment amount, we'll actually put uh, we'll actually put zero. We're going to assume we're not going to make any contributions to the investment, but we'll assume that we start with 10,000. So in this sort of hypothetical, imagine investing $10,000 today for 45 years at a 9.3% average rate of return that compounds monthly, but you're not gonna add anything to it. If our numbers are correct so far, this should be about $650,000. And I confess, I didn't do these calculations before recording this video, so we're gonna find out together. Well, there you go, $646,421.34. Now, what we could do, I don't know if that actually sums, so we can take this number, add it to this number, and sure enough, we get this number. It's just another example of how seemingly small amounts of money, certainly $10,000 is a lot, but relative to $650,000, uh, it's amazing to see that number, 10,000, grow into uh, such a large sum of money. Okay, before I go down the rabbit hole any further than that, again, I just wanted to point out uh, that you can factor in your current savings uh, into the formula. Again, you'll just add it here. So again, you've got your interest rate. I've divided it by 12 for a monthly rate of return. Uh, you've got the time period, and you may want to change that. For you, it may be something longer or shorter than 45 years. Multiply it by 12 for monthly compounding. Your savings, I would put the annual amount of your savings in and then if you wanted to do monthly, divide it by 12. And then if you have any current savings, you could add that as well. Now, uh, before we close out this video, I want to show you a way that you can set this formula up so that it's easier to make changes to these numbers rather than having to go into this individual formula here and make changes. So here's what we're going to do. Let's imagine uh, we'll start it here. So let's have some interest rate. Uh, we'll say time period, uh, and, uh, we'll say annual savings, current savings, and compounding period. And we're going to take this number, this formula, and we'll move it here. So again, it's the same formula. And what we're going to start to do is substitute these hard-coded numbers with, with a variable. So we can put the interest rate here, 9.3%. And then in this formula, instead of hard coding 9.3%, what we'll do instead is simply click this box and it puts B3 here. And if I hit return, you'll see it's still the same number. Rather than hard coding 9.3% into the formula, it's simply uh, picking that number from here. And the beauty of that is now if you want to change the interest rate, 
rather than having to go into the formula itself and change it, you can just change it here. So we'll just say 9%. Of course, this number goes down. So let's put it back to 9.3 just so we have consistency. And then we can continue to do the same thing, right? So for time period, 45 years, and we'll take this out and use this. Yep, still working. Annual savings, we had 20, again, a negative number, 2496. So again, we can put this here. And actually, what I'm going to do is leave the minus sign, the negative number in the formula. And then, whoops, that's going to mess the number up because they're both negatives. We don't want that. Take the negative out of here. There we go. You can do it either way. And then for current savings, 10,000. And we can actually make this a dollar sign. We can make this dollar. Uh, open this up. Again, I'm going to leave the negative sign here. But otherwise, I'm going to use that. And there we go. And so, you know, you might play with different assumptions. You may say, well, what happens if I can save $3,000 a year instead of roughly $2,500? And there's your answer. Or you might say, you know, I don't think 9.3%. So I'm going to be a lot more conservative. Let's assume 7%. Big difference in the number. Of course, we know that having read Retire Before Mom and Dad, even small changes make a big difference. Certainly big changes like going from 9.3% to 7% also make really big differences in the results. Now, what about this compounding period? Well, what we can do, you notice we've got these 12s here uh, in three places. What we can do is we can put 12 here and then take this out and use that cell instead. We use the same cell three times. Again, we get the same answer, right? Uh, but, uh, and let me put this back just so we can have some consistency with the numbers. We see that it still matches what we had up here. But the idea here is maybe you want to look at annual compounding. Well, you just change this to a one. It makes a big difference. Or maybe you want to look at uh, daily compounding. Certainly makes a difference, not as big, but uh, you know, $50,000, $40,000 is uh, a lot of money even 45 years from now. Of course, it won't buy what it buys today. Uh, but there you go. There's the formula. That's the basic formula I used throughout the book. Uh, that's how you can use it. You can set it up again in a Google spreadsheet like I've done here, which is available for free. If you have Excel or maybe if you're a Mac and you have numbers, any kind of spreadsheet program should be able to do the same formula and it should work the same way. And then with just a couple of minutes of time, you can set up uh, this uh, formula with these inputs, and then you can very easily, as I mentioned, change, whoops, well, 20%. By the way, this number is going to get ginormous. <laughs> there you go. It's not a bad number. Uh, but let's come back down to earth. Even 10% is too high, I think, for an assumption. But uh, the point is you can make changes to whatever these assumptions you want to to model it with your situation.